Hey YouTube, um, this is my first video, so using new camera, new editing software, first time on YouTube. So we're gonna try this out. Um, be painting this Mustang. Um, I already painted like the hood and the trunk and some trim areas. So now I'm, we're gonna go all the way around the side here. Um, since it's a pearl, same with metallics. You wanna do that kind of all at the same time, so your paint matches, especially with metallics, because they could have different shades if you did it by panels. Um, we're gonna use this Devilbus gun, it's the FLG5, or Finish Line 5, whatever you wanna call it, and try out this Restoration Shop paint. Uh, it actually looks really nice. It's cheap, though, um, on the internet. I forget where I got it, but uh, it looks real nice. It's a Viper Blue. And we'll just use this Eastwood Clear, which I don't know, it works fine. I couldn't tell you if it's good or not. It's the only clear I ever used. But, um, you know, I think it looks great. Uh, and I also use the D cup system here. Uh, it's just easier. It's like a disposable paint cup for your gun. Instead of um, going through a ton of thinners, cleaning your, your cups out, you just use those disposable cups. You just throw them in the trash when you're done. And if you do have a little bit left over, a little bit of paint, um, they do have caps so you can uh, save them for you know a little bit of time. Uh, as long as your paint doesn't have like a hardener activator, like this base coat doesn't, it's just a reducer in it. I'm gonna pull a filter out, a strainer, and I have a little bit of leftover paint. I'm gonna shoot first. Um, just to make sure my gun's shooting correctly and I don't have any issues like fish eyes. I was fighting fish eyes pretty bad uh, on the trim pieces and whatnot. Um, so I was going to shoot a little bit of this first on a panel and just see you know, if I have any issues. If so, then I got some extra reducer laying around that I could wipe that off and then figure out where my problem's coming from. So just stirring it back up so the metallics are kind of where they need to be. They're not laying down at the bottom. So just give it a quick stir and then strain it into the cup. Yeah, I think that was just day old paint. So I didn't have to thin it out. Sometimes you have to thin it back out if it's been sitting for a few months. gun just slides right into the cup there and it's a real easy system no issues with flow rate or nothing I mean it shoots fine no leaks and I, I think it's the cheapest type of system like that on the market and I've had no issues very happy with it and so here you know since we're just in the garage I gotta water down um, the floor around the car so we'll just get a quick spray with the water hose. Um, keep all the dust down. I notice a big difference if you do this or not. So definitely want to water it down. And put lights around your car like that. See how I got lights kind of set up around the car. Um, so I can really see how the paint's laying down. You know, especially important with your clear coat. Uh, because... You know, the, however you lay down your clear, that's the way it's going to dry, that's the way it's going to look. So you want to make sure it's a good wet, wet look, you know. <clears throat> Unfortunately, as you'll see, I had some pretty big issues with my gun later, but. Um, this is the compressor I use. It's just a 33 gallon Husky from Home Depot. It works fine, but there's no filtration system on it right now. So I use this DeVilba Snake. It's, it's a big old hose, just full of desiccants. And uh, ever since I got one of those, I haven't had any fish eye issues. Um, so it's worked really well. It's just a disposable type of thing. You just use it for maybe one paint job and then you throw it out. But 
you know, for what I'm doing, you know, it works really well. And then later on, I'll, I'll figure out a filtration system for that compressor. And um, that's just the I, just the parts washer I used uh, to clean my gun. Just fill it with thinner and take apart the gun on the side there like I'm showing. And then just have a good fresh bottle of thinners to wash down your gun with. And, um, you know, when it's dirty, you just drain out the old thinner and put fill it up with new, you know. Works really great for, you know, my purposes. <clears throat> so I got a red laying out. And um, I'm going to tack the car off here. And what that is, just a, like a sticky, like a sticky rag. And you just slide it lightly over the panels. You don't want to go hard or anything, or it could leave a residue. Your paint could have issues. But the whole purpose is just to pick up any last little bit of dirt, lint, whatever on the panel. You know, so you got a real nice clean surface. You just right before you, you lay down your base coat. Um, when using it on the clear coat, just because clear takes forever to dry, you know, you can really scratch it. Even the day after, you know, 24 hours later, it's real easy to put a, put a scratch in your clear. So just do it on your base coats. You know, your base hardens up pretty quick and you can kind of go to town with your, with your tack rags. Especially in the garage, you know, you got overspray, it's hard to get it out. And that's a good thing about tack rag, it will get all your overspray off too, between coats. So, really like the secret of making really nice paint jobs. So we'll finish tacking that off and then yeah, be ready to shoot here. So I'm gonna hook the gun up to the snake. We'll spray a little test panel here. See how it's laying down. Adjust the gun real quick. That's pretty much the shape you want. It's a nice, even, football looking shape with good uh, atomization. And so I'm just checking to see if I have any fish eyes or anything before I go spraying this whole panel. So just give that a few seconds. It takes a couple seconds to show up. But it looks like we're good. So I'll go ahead and finish off that. A uh, little bit of extra paint I had. Uh, we'll knock out this fender and mix up a little bit more. But the gun does really spray great, but unfortunately, yeah, I don't know. I can find a rebuild kit or something, but I'm really liking the Eastwood gun. Uh, I had to fix a run later. I sanded too far down, and and Isa would go and really shot really nice. So I'll probably try it out for a while. Okay, 
here I'm gonna mix up a new batch of paint and I have a ton of those cups I bought a huge box of those off of uh, eBay those mixing cups for uh, like I don't know it's like 35 bucks for a hundred of them was especially working at home or um, painting at home in a garage I don't want to have a big mess so I just like throw stuff away so they worked out real nice and give this a good stir <coughs> mix my metallics back up even though I just used it but your metallics will settle at the bottom so you just want to stir it and right before you spray you want to turn your gun upside down give that Pour my reducer in a cup just so it's easier to pour out and measure. <coughs> Another cup. So two to one. So we're going to go six and three with the reducer. So since it's a two to one, we're going to go six to the six with the paint and then since it's a two to one we'll just go three more to the nine with the reducer I'll mix that up that'll give me a full thing since over here the two to one only goes up to like the middle of the of the deal good I mean we almost got full coverage on our first coat so this stuff covers very very nicely and so what I use is just one of these to fill it up it's the easiest way to do it without making a mess So that's at the six. And we'll put our reducer to the nine. So that's nine. If you pull your trigger, the fluid will drop back into the cup, so it doesn't make a big mess. Just open this back up. Give that a good stir.
finish off this first coat here um, it was getting really nice coverage on the on that first coat and I just do about a 50% overlap um, maybe you should go more on my talks and pearls I don't really know but uh, I, I do like these guns with these big fans on them so you don't really have to worry about modeling too much. But yeah, just shooting on very smooth. And so I was checking the air pressure out of my gun which at the time, I wasn't sure what was going on there. I checked the compressor. So I figured it should have been turning on by now. And yeah, I didn't know that the, um, that the breaker had tripped at the time. But ended up getting through the whole, the whole side there without having any issue. So I, I think you could do a paint job with a little compressor, even if you have a high CFM gun like that. I think that gun takes about 14 CFM as long as it's working fine because it did great on the base all the way around but yeah, I don't know what happened with the clear it just the gun just fell apart <clears throat> as you'll see later when the clear goes down it doesn't go down very good at all There I am checking again, wondering what's going on. And it's my first time shooting this much at one time. But like I said, it was doing fine until I had those issues. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think you could probably do a whole car with any gun and that size compressor but since I have that Eastwood gun I might as well use it Yeah, really not too much overspray. I just kind of crack the garage over there, you can see, and it evacuates just fine. But here I'm showing you, um, I'm about to shoot my second coat, and I'm just testing to see if it's tacked off or not. And I just touch areas that you know aren't seen, or you touch the masking. And then once you're, um, once you know it's dry to the touch, then you can start tacking it off. Um, I wait till it's pretty dry. So I don't want to have any issues putting a gash in with the tack rag or pulling metallics. But yeah, we're just in between each base coat. Just tack it off again because more dust and lint or whatever will fall on the panels as it's, as it's dry and tacking off for the 10-15 minutes. So you just want to go over it again. Keep your surface as clean as possible. And shoot the second coat. I 
still having to learn this GoPro. Um, and the best way to mount it so you guys can see. Uh, I do like this head mount. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, but it was only recording for 12 minutes and it would cut off. And I guess it was because I was using it at 1080p at 60 frames a second. And I don't know if it's something with the memory or what, but it was cutting off early. So I noticed if I dropped down to 30 frames, you know, I could get some more time out of it. So I have to keep messing with it, but it, it did cut off early. Uh, as you saw on that first coat, uh, it cut off kind of early. But I think this one gets all the way around. As you see, um, my uh, regulator is still acting weird. Even though now my compressor is kicking on at the time, you know, I figured figured out the tripper broke the the breaker broke at the time, but um, yeah, it was the the regulator was acting weird, and so I knew I knew something was going on with the gun at the time, um, because it would it would drop really low and then it would go really high. I wasn't sure what the issue was. I'm guessing it's whatever screwed up with the gun was um, messing with the how the air pressure was going in and out. So something was definitely up, but it did it shot base fine um, anyway. And I got through the clear, but it was a real issue. <clears throat> so I don't know I might get the rebuild kit and we'll just see what happens but I'm thinking maybe just trying something else but I just shoot about 30 PSI I just kind of adjust how the paint's looking. You know, if it's orange peely, raise it up a little bit. Um, too much overspray, and you bring it down. But 30 seems about where I like to be at. I move kind of fast with the base coat just because there's no reason to run your base coat you know you can put on light coats until you get full coverage you know it doesn't really matter unless you're trying to match a color or blend it or something but other than that there's no reason to run your base but if you do I mean you could sand it out before you clear it and that's a good thing about base coat and clear coat if you have an issue you could fix it and then move on. Yeah, I'm just about wrapping up the second coat here. And we'll move on. All right, so now we're gonna mix up our clear coat. We got our base down. It looks real good. Um, I put four coats on here. Just, I had a lot of paint, so I just wanna make sure I had full coverage. Um, after the last coat, um, what I did, I put a orientation coat, 
and it's necessary for metallics or in this case a pearl but you come back uh, probably like that far back or so and just kind of just go over the whole thing like this just kind of coating it your same kind of overlap but just all like that and the whole purpose is that is so the metallics kind of orientate um, the correct way so there's not like modeling so you wouldn't see like your stripes of um, metallic when you did your regular coats uh, it's also a good reason to look for a gun that has a real big fan that comes out and the FLG5 definitely has that so I, another reason I suggest this gun so when you're doing your regular coats you know it has a huge fan that's hitting it so you wouldn't really have that much modeling going on in the first place but I still do the orientation code anyway uh, but all right I mean it looks pretty good and I just tacked it off also after you do the orientation coat make sure you tack it really good um, you can see this was a brand new rag I got and it pulls off all that overspray so you have a much better job at the end before you put your clear coat on and so all right let's make some clear coat so this is also a two to one ratio so we're going to mix it the same way where the color goes to six and the activator would go to nine since it's an activator in here which i think all clear coats are you can't um you can't save it so let's mix it And again, you'll strain the same way, but you will not tack between coats. Not on clear coat. So we'll shoot down that first coat of clear. You know, pretty good speed with it, you know. Went kind of slow with it, try to get a little wet look, but whatever reason, and it just went on dry. I still think it's the gun. The Eastwood gun shot a lot different, put a lot more material out. And that this gun has a 1.4 tip, and the Eastwood only has a 1.3, so there was something going on with it. <clears throat> As you'll see at the end, I wasn't very happy with it. So it took a lot <laughs> to um, to make it look nice. I really had to flood it after this uh, first that the one the first and the second coat really had to flood it after that to get a decent peel. Um, something where I could just easily sand and buff it, make it look nice, but. Yeah, this this coat went down terrible. I should just stop there, and figure out what was going on, but oh well, we got.
got to figure it out. <clears throat> and I think it was the second coat where you really tell the fan just closed up and it was done. And um, clean the gun, uh, tried thinning, over reducing the, uh, the clear, and just nothing was working. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just done. I just put it on the same way, just slower, try to get more of a wet look. Uh, same thing about 50% overlap maybe you should go a little bit more you know, like a 60 or 75 but uh, just go slow with it try to get a wet look because um, it's gonna dry the way you spray it down so if it looks dry that's the way it's going to dry you know so you want to get right on the edge where you're about to run it And I did get one run on the driver's side. So I was able to get it on pretty wet at the end to make it look nice. And I shoot the same with clear coat, about 30 PSI or so. And full fan, full everything. <clears throat> Seems to lay down the best. I noticed, um, on the horizontal panels, you can really load it up and it's not going to run on you, but these vertical panels are a little bit more difficult, you know. So I spray it a couple times and then uh, I look at it, look at what the peel looks like. If it's still not good enough for me, then I hit it another time and I just kind of keep going over the, each panel like that until I got a real nice wet look on it until I figure out how to thin out these clears correctly because I didn't thin this one out um, but I think I'll try a 10% next time see if it'll just lay out better and it could be why you know maybe it gummed up that gun I'm not sure what happened <clears throat> But yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm not too happy. It doesn't look that great, but luckily we were able to clean that up, make it look nice. So here it is when it's all finished. Um, yeah, you'll see it looks a lot nicer now. Real nice peel and the reflection of the light. Uh, really happy with it. Yeah, it would be pretty easy to sand it out now. You know, passenger side was a little bit worse because um, that's where I really had the issues with the gun. But it's really not bad. I think you know it'll sand right out. It's pretty close to what you're looking at there. There's just a couple areas on the door, a little bit of texture on it. 
but I thought that came out pretty good. Um, yeah, real nice shine to it. You can see the run right here on the door. It actually went all the way down the door. Um, so sanded that out. But I went too far, hit into the base coat, and um, whatever reason, you know, I thought it'd be fine since I didn't go past the base, I could clear over that. But if something was sanding over the the pearls, it changed the way the pearls looked, and so I had to respray the whole bottom of part of that door. <laughs> but I just did it where that body panel break was, and as long as I was within that 24-hour period, you know. It would just melt right back in. But yeah, real nice shine. I, I mean, I'm really happy with that paint and the clear. Uh, you know, it came out really nice. That door has the problem, but you know worst comes to worst we'll just throw a new coat of clear on the door but i think it'll it'll come out it's really not that bad but wasn't exactly what i was looking for but all in our you know car looks really nice especially for really my first time laying down paint on a car i was pretty happy with it So I was going to try the Norton liquid ice system to polish it out. I've had the McGuire's, but um, I like to try one of those, just the one compound system that you use on different pads. Just so I don't have to clean out different types of compounds off the panels. I don't have to worry about, you know, different types of abrasions. abrasions. That it'll just be the same compound I'm using. I think the job will go a lot faster. So we'll give it a shot, get back together, and start buffing it out. I think what I'm showing it here is how I was laying it clear to make it look nice where I just keep going over it until I look at the peel and then I'd hit it again and I look at the peel and then I hit it again until it finally looked a real nice wet coat, you know? So there's a good amount of clear on there. I use about three uh, quarters of a gallon just on this. So we got plenty to sand out think we'll have any issues and we'll probably just start at 2000 grit it's not bad we're just knocking most of the dust off a little bit of texture but yeah that's it thanks